Oh my God, guys. Seriously? Again? Really now? I am sure that the moment all of you saw what was going on in the news, that you knew, you knew that I would have to go and cover this because it is just simply too juicy. It is simply too stupid. It is too great for me to not cover. Yet another War Thunder player leaks restricted military documents. And I know for a lot of you who are probably seeing this for the first time, you're probably wondering, wait a minute, hold on, again? What do you mean again? And some of you who are even less familiar with the whole situation are probably wondering, hey, what the hell is War Thunder? What is it that is going on in the first place? Well, my friends, allow me to explain. But everyone, before we go ahead and start today's video, I wanted to address something. One of the big criticisms that I have received is that I disproportionately cover certain aspects of media. And I will fully admit, considering everything that I have covered on my varying episodes, yeah, that is probably true. But in order to understand what it is that I'm talking about and make sure that I don't get wrapped up in any kind of media bias, this is why I've been utilizing a service called Ground News. What I am talking about here is an app and a website that will combine all sides of every story in one place so that you can see it along with all the varying biases of that particular source. As an example, for anyone wondering, on that previous video that I did about slavery in Florida and its education, I was specifically pulling from resources like Ground News in order to be able to see the biases of the varying outlets that were reporting things. You can see from the very beginning that the majority of sources that were even reporting on the subject in the first place were left-leaning. And I'll say this right now, but that is not inherently a bad thing. One of the features that Ground News has is something called Blind Spot, which, considering that the amount of sources on this that lean left, it will specifically point out that only 16% of the sources that are talking about this are right-wing leaning, which means that a lot of people who only follow right-wing sources are not going to hear about this at all. Whether it's organizing the bias of the coverage, analyzing the ownership of where your news is actually coming, coming from, or rating the factuality level of the sources that you were pulling from the first place. Ground News has all of this. I can only say that I'm incredibly grateful for Ground News sponsoring me because their service is incredibly valuable to what it is that I do. So my friends, I'm telling you this right now. Go to ground.news slash history of everything and you can get all sides of every story. Go check out my link down in the description and you're going to be able to get 30% off subscription. If all of us took the time to understand the biases of the things that we are reading, then perhaps we wouldn't be as angry with one another all the time. Thank you, Ground news for sponsoring this episode. I know that a number of people who are listening to this are going to think, hey, this kind of sounds like an ad, but I am, I'm telling you this right now. This is not an ad for War Thunder. It is absolutely not. I do not think that Gaijin Entertainment would be very happy with me making a video explaining how their game has been utilized for military leaks of classified information. I, 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 don't, I don't think that that is something that is going to work out very well in my favor. But the language, admittedly, is still somewhat the same. War Thunder, for anyone who is not aware of what this is, is a free-to-play vehicular combat multiplayer video game that was developed and published by Gaijin Entertainment. This is something that was announced back in 2011 and it was first released in November 2012 as an open beta with a worldwide release in January of 2013 and it has been going strong ever since then with its first official big release on the 21st of December 2016. This is something that was initially developed as a flying simulation game. It had previously been named War Thunder World of Planes but due to the fact that that name is extremely similar with Wargaming's World of Warplanes, its biggest rival. This just was something that they didn't want to cause any kind of confusion, so they ended up changing it to its present name back in the year 2012. It's actually kind of funny because initially when Gaijin went and announced this game, they would claim later that no, the entire thing was actually an April Fool's joke, before then later confirming the existence of the game in June of that same year. A little bit of an odd detail, but I figured I just wanted to throw that in there because honestly, this entire thing kind of reads like an April Fool's joke itself, but no, no, I'm, I'm 100% serious with everything that I'm going to be talking about here today. When you are playing War Thunder as a game, this is something that is based around combined arms battles, things on air, land, and sea, with vehicles ranging from pre-World War I to modern day, with this specific emphasis that people usually care more about when it comes to things like World War II, the Vietnam War, and the Cold War. And so players are able to control aircraft, they're able to control ground vehicles and warships from all kinds of different countries around the world, from the United States, Germany, Russia, Britain, France, Japan, as well as other smaller militaries, or rather even if they're a major nation, places that haven't necessarily been involved in as many major conflicts, such as Italy, China, Sweden, and Israel. But even if they aren't necessarily considered major players, the amount of nations that I have listed off just right here is pretty significant. And you have to understand that the sheer amount of vehicles that we are talking about in this game is truly mind-boggling. And no, again, this is not an ad. I am not doing an ad for War Thunder right now. There are many vehicles that in all of my years of studying the military 
military, I have quite literally never heard of in my life, but I guarantee you right now that there are plenty of fans for said vehicles and they care a lot about these things. Perhaps in this case too much, those fans are kind of the problem here. Because if you wanted to be able to describe any kind of fans as being super fans of a genre, then Milsims, you definitely have the people for War Thunder. That, that cannot be understated. That is absolutely true. And so since mid-2021, fans of this very realistic military-themed war game have occasionally, accidentally, or on purpose or otherwise, ended up posting classified or restricted information that relate to any number of different countries' militaries, whether it be Britain, France, the Chinese, the United States, it doesn't matter. Everyone is free game. They only care about these vehicles, not any geopolitical consequences. And as for why they would do this in the first place? Well, we, we have a clear answer, actually. When he was asked about the recurring problem that War Thunder seems to have with classified military leaks and the dedication of the fans, the owner of the company, Gaijin, had this to say. According to Anton Yudensev, he would say, our players are very passionate about War Thunder and military vehicles, and sometimes they're too passionate. Players expect authenticity. When someone prefers to play Leclerc in War Thunder, they are usually motivated to convince the dev team to increase the tank's performance by providing some form of documentation. In other words, if we are going to be using the French tank of the Leclerc as an example, much like all of you people watching this video right now, I'm sure are really big fans of history, the people that typically play War Thunder are individuals that really care about their tanks and planes, some of them to a rather extreme degree, to the point that it makes them upset that if they see something in their game that is not 100% accurate when pertaining to a particular vehicle, maybe even one that they passionately care about, then they are definitely, definitely, definitely definitely going to make that known. They will want that thing fixed. We are talking about an issue of constantly leaking military documents that is not something that has happened once. It has not happened twice. It has not happened three times. Oh no, 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 no. Depending on who it is that you ask and what information you're able to find, this has happened almost a dozen times, if not more. And I am not kidding about that number. So today, my friends, what it is that I figured that we could all do is go and look over these leaks at their history, their story, see if we can find out what happened in the first place, what was going on with these vehicles, maybe even a little bit of the history of those vehicles in question. Because I will say this right now, over the course of doing research for this video, which has taken days, days, mind you, for me to be able to create, I will say that there was significantly more than I originally thought going into this thing. So before we go any further, please show me some support, like this video right now, and if you could put in the comment section what your favorite leak out of all these is, perhaps what the dumbest reason is, I would greatly appreciate it because I want to hear what you all are thinking. But without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the history of these leaks and these tanks and everything that went wrong, which oftentimes does in history. The first one that we're going to be talking about today is definitely the most iffy of the bunch. As I'm going to say right now, I do not really have all that much information on this thing. It was genuinely bothering me how many hours I was trying to spend to find whatever I could on this, to the point that I even wonder if it does count as a leak. But according to the wiki, it is there. This is something that did in fact happen, and it happened before the time frame of 2021, which is when the majority of people say that the leaks actually began. But this may in fact be the start of all of it, because on May 18th, 2020, there was a leak in the War Thunder forums regarding the T-69 2G tank. Now, for anyone who is not aware of what this tank is, the medium tank T-69 2G is a Bangladeshi upgrade to the fleet of T-69 tanks utilized by the Bangladeshi government. The Chinese Type 69 tank is in itself a modified Type 59 tank, something that incorporates some of the technology from the Russian T-62 tank. If we are talking about the development of this vehicle over time, it is something that ran roughly around the same time as the upgrades of the T-59 when they were being developed and implemented so that by the time that the T-69 was completed, really, there was no real significant advantage to the People's Liberation Army in firepower or protection. It just wasn't something that was actually effective by the time that it was ready, and as a result, it was not readily adopted by the military. But that was the regular Type 69 that we're talking about here. The primary production variant that was made was the Type 69 II. This was something that did offer at least some limited advantages over the Type 59, and thanks to the fact that it wasn't necessarily very expensive, it was exported quite a lot, notably to places like Iraq. In fact, if we're talking about the number of tanks that went to Iraq, it's actually quite a lot. Around 1,500 ended up being delivered over the course of 1983 through 1987, which is quite a number of tanks that we're talking about here. With the sheer amount of numbers that ended up being imported, these tanks were used heavily by Iraq, going to be used over the course of the Iran-Iraq 
Iraq War of 1980 to 1988, they were utilized in the Gulf War of 1991, and of course, they were used in the Iraq War of 2003. So, these were the tanks, in other words, that were being absolutely slaughtered by the United States and coalition forces over the course of the latter two conflicts. Yeah, not exactly the best. These things were basically fish in a barrel. It, it Really no contest. But either way, the leak. So though I could not find much information on what exactly happened, apparently a user ended up leaking classified manuals of the Bangladeshi Type 69 2G tank, and the manuals included classified information about the tank's fire control system as well as its engine. As for how they got their hands on these manuals in the first place, apparently they managed to get them through the Bangladeshi Army's digital archive. Again, I am not sure how they got that in the first place, what their position is, what kind of access they had, really how any of that could have happened, but apparently it did. The manuals were then later removed by the forum moderators, as this is something that Gaijin simply could not allow to actually be on their forums. Again, this is the first one that we're talking about here today, and definitely among all the ones that I'm about to talk about, this is the one that I could find the least amount of information on. Because if you do go onto War Thunder right now and trying to find links to all the stuff that I'm talking about, the majority of this you're not going to be able to find unless it has been archived. Like, th this is the page that you're going to end up seeing. That's really it for the first one on here. Not the best start, I know, but I promise you, it gets a lot better. Or worse, depending on how you want to think of it. The second leak that we're going to be talking about here is the one that most people consider to be the first one, and if it is not the first, then it definitely is the first major one, that being the Challenger 2 tank leak. And guys, I honestly have to say, looking at this whole thing, it's just absolutely hilarious. I, I, I can't believe that this even happened in the first place. But okay, the Challenger 2. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this particular tank, the Challenger 2 tank is a third-generation British main battle tank. This is something that has been in service with the British Army going back all the way since 1994. And I say that since 1994, because yes, this is something that is still being used, and that is kind of the important part here. The entire thing was designed back in 1986 as a kind of private venture by Vickers Defense Systems. And at the time, this was a major redesign of the company's earlier Challenger 1. But I will say this right now, despite having very superficial resemblances to the original Challenger, the Challenger 2 is by no means the same as the Challenger 1 at all. The sheer amount of design changes, advancements in technology, everything that went into this particular tank in comparison to its predecessor meant that only around 3 to 5% of its components ended up being interchangeable. Everything else, brand new and significantly better. This new main combat tank was going to outperform its predecessor in every single way possible. The Challenger 2 tank is something that is outfitted with second generation Cobham composite armor. It is lighter than the original Cobham that was used, but but simultaneously, it is more protective. At the same time, the tank's turret has been completely rebuilt, and the Challenger 2 has NBC protection as well as autonomous fire suppression equipment. When combined with the new 120mm Royal Ordnance L30A1 tank gun that is installed on it, that means it is capable of firing a wide range of standard NATO 120mm tank ammunition, giving it a wicked punch. Really, when we are looking at this thing, the Challenger 2 is arguably the pinnacle of British engineering when it comes to tanks. It really is. It is the result of knowledge that has been garnered, that has been saved, that has been researched and developed over many, many years of main battle tank families that have been developed inside of Britain alongside its allies. And considering the sheer amount of firepower and armor that this thing has, it is both extremely durable and extremely powerful. In fact, if I'm going to bring up a story about one of the things that the Challenger 2 has done, it has been used in peacekeeping missions and exercises before, but it would see its first combat use back in March of 2003 during the invasion of Iraq. At the time, the 7th Armored Brigade, part of the 1st Armored Division, was in action with 120 Challenger 2s around the city of Basra. The tanks during this time would see extensive use during the Siege of Basra, providing fire support to British forces as well as armored protection. And then, per the reports, in one encounter within the urban area, a Challenger 2 ended up coming under attack from irregular forces that were armed with machine guns as well as rocket-propelled grenades. The driver's sight was damaged, and while attempting to back away under the commander's direction, the other sites were damaged and the tank ended up throwing its tracks when entering a ditch. Normally when talking about a tank at this point, it is a dead sitting duck. It is something that is going to be bombarded completely into oblivion. And indeed, the Challenger 2 at this time that had its tracks thrown ended up being hit directly by eight RPGs. That as well as a Milan anti-tank missile and simultaneously was under direct small arms fire for hours. Yes, you heard me right, for hours. 
But despite all of that, the crew managed to survive and would remain safe within the tank until the tank ended up being recovered for repairs. The worst damage being to the sighting system itself that had initially been knocked out, everything else about the tank was relatively fine. This particular tank would end up going back into the action only six hours later after repairs, and that's it. All of that damage, everything that it took, and it just took it like a freaking juggernaut and then kept going. These tanks are remarkably durable, to the point that there is one story about a another Challenger 2 tank near Basra that ended up surviving 70 RPG hits and still being able to fight and move forward. So yeah, as I said, this whole thing is a pretty strong tank. It is something that is loved by a lot of people and perhaps for some people, as many of the vehicles that we're going to be talking about here today, maybe loved a little bit too much, which is going to bring us to the incident. On July 14th, 2021, in an effort to prove that the developers behind the combat game had made a mistake, one of the players went ahead and published a a classified British military document about it. The player that we're going to be talking about here specifically identified himself as a British tank commander and claimed that the model that was being used for the Challenger 2 tank was not entirely correct and that this was something that the developers needed to fix. Which, like, yeah, initially going into this, I'm going to kind of understand, okay, you are a British tank commander, you see something that you, from first-hand experience, are able to identify, that's not entirely correct, I should say this, maybe utilizing my credentials that I know this, and put in a request about it, maybe, hopefully the developers listen, but no, no, he, he, he's going to go just a little, a little bit further. The tank commander that we're talking about here specifically listed in his bio that his location was the Tidworth Camp in Wiltshire, this being a place in England that reportedly is the base that is home to the Royal Tank Regiment, which is the thing that is going to field Challenger 2 tanks. So again, looking at this, we kind of would get an idea or understanding that what he's talking about may be real. He may be who it is that he claims to be. And so this player who goes by the handle Pyrophoric reportedly started sharing an image on the War Thunder form of the tank specs that were pulled directly from the Challenger 2's Army Equipment Support publication, which is effectively a type of tactical manual. And he would go and say in the forums, linking those screenshots with the following edited images from the AESPs, which is meant to show the relationship of the various components, he would end up writing on July 14th alongside images of the Challenger 2 specs, which naturally, of course, were then removed, quote, the image isn't exactly to scale as it's only meant to show the position of components relative to each other, but it works for the point I'm trying to make here. The trunnions sit centrally on the rotor, the trunnions support the rotor in the turret structure and and the GCE subcomponents, as previously stated, are all mounted to the rotor. And so, okay, this tanker is going and releasing these images and is saying like, hey, the tank isn't accurate. Look, I have the proof here, but is it okay for him to do so? Well, maybe, at least he thinks it is, because the images apparently had the label UK restricted crossed out and the words unclassified stamped on it, including various blacked out passages. But there's just kind of one problem here. The specs of the tank were not actually cleared for release. And the way the Gaijin would end up discovering that is because rather than going, okay, hey, you provided us all these details, awesome, we're going to immediately implement them in the game, they instead decided, hey, we're going to reach out to the Ministry of Frickin' Defense of Britain, and we're going to ask them the deal with these tank specs and see if they're legit. Like you can see very clearly from the screenshot that I have behind me here, this is what they're going to have to do in the first place when they receive this information. They have to go and verify whether or not the information that they're receiving is in fact declassified. And what they were able to find find from this was not exactly good for the tanker. A moderator for the forum, whose name is Templar, as you can see behind me here, went and explained that the developer had removed the material since they went and received confirmation from the Ministry of Defense that the document was in fact still classified and they weren't supposed to have it. Quote, we have written confirmation from the Ministry of Defense that this document remains classified. By continuing to disseminate it, you are in violation of the Official Secrets Act, as stated by the warning on the cover of the document. An offense which can carry up to 14 years prison sentence if prosecuted. Oh my god. Following further with, of this you are already aware, as a service person you have signed a declaration that you understand the act and what actions it compels you to take. Every time you post this, you place us, the international representatives of Gaijin, especially any UK citizens, in hot water as the warning so helpfully states that unauthorized retention of a protected document is an offense. 
And so, yeah, obviously the tanker goes and shuts down and everyone starts wondering, well, hey, wait a minute, hold on. They confirmed that these documents, though they were obviously still classified, that they were legitimate. And that means that the information that was being presented was true. So people naturally began wondering, are you going to actually implement the changes? With one person saying, and I have it up right here, well, I hope that despite the sources having been removed and rejected for legal purposes, the mantlet will still be fixed. After all, we know for certain that it's wrong in game, and we now know, for a better extent, how it should actually be. I wonder if we will have that mantlet fixed, and I hope so. But no, 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 that's not going to work, because then a moderator has to turn around and go and say, but no, no, that, that's not going to work, because then a moderator is going to have to then turn around and say, quote, there is no valid source material that can be used, therefore, no change is going to take place. We have made it very clear on our stance of source material. So yeah, no changes were coming for very obvious reasons, and it just makes the entire thing ridiculous because it was distinctly proven that this was real, but they couldn't do anything about it. And from this, we actually have no information on what ended up having to the tank commander. If anyone, again, has any information on what was found, if they found the person that actually did this, I would love to see it because in all of my research, I couldn't find anyone that was actually listed on this. He just seems to have disappeared from the forums and the internet at this time. So, okay, we just covered the Challenger 2 tank for the British, and wouldn't you know it, the French, naturally speaking not wanting to be outdone by the British, go and have their own leak only three months later regarding their own Leclerc tank. Ah, the French. If we're going to be talking about the history of this particular tank, then development of the Leclerc main battle tank is something that dates back all the way back to the year 1964. This being when the French military had initiated a study on possible replacements for the AMX-30 tank. This was a tank that was about to be introduced into service at the time, but by the early 1970s, the inferiority of the AMX-30 compared to the more modern Soviet T-series had become fairly obvious. And as a result of this, work on developing a replacement officially began, with the first specifications of this being drawn up by 1977. Fast forward a couple years, and in 1980, France and Germany would begin joint development of a new main battle tank. However, similar to the problems that they experienced before with the Europanzer development from decades ago, this joint effort between the two powers ended up coming to an end shortly afterwards due to various disagreements between the two powers, with France continuing work on its own. And France, despite the fact that they were doing this on their own, didn't want this to just be a good tank. They wanted it to be the best that they possibly could, the most modern, the best developed. This was a main battle tank that was going to be utilizing cutting-edge performance, cutting-edge technology, everything that you could possibly imagine they were going to be using for this thing. However, there is a little bit of a problem when you are going to be focusing an emphasis on quality rather than being able to produce a significant quantity, and that is that the price per unit of each one of these ended up being much higher than they had initially anticipated. So what France did at the time was seek partnership with another state in order to reduce these costs, and eventually a partnership was established with the United Arab Emirates, who would be the second and only other primary operator of the new tank besides France itself. Thus, in 1986, the tank would receive its name Leclerc, with six initial prototypes being produced. Mass production subsequently started in 1990 and would go on until 2007, and during production, the Leclerc would be built in various batches and series, with each one introduced various tweaks and changes to the design while also incorporating major upgrades during some iterations. And since then, the Leclerc has been used rather extensively all over the world, being used in a number of different UN peacekeeping missions, such as in places like Kosovo and Lebanon, where, reportedly, it performed rather well. And then if you look at things more recently, the United Arab Emirates went and deployed a number of its own Leclercs to Yemen, with some of these vehicles getting damaged, and past that point, there really isn't anything that they could do to replace them if they outright Right, got destroyed. See, remember what I said earlier, these tanks stopped being produced back in the year 2007. And between the two powers of France and the United Arab Emirates, only around 860 of these were produced. Past that point, there are no other replacements for them if one should actually get destroyed. So, okay, I guess that's all well and good about the tanks, but what about the leak itself for this? Well, what it seemed happened is that in comparison to the Challenger 2 from the previous incident, in this case, a former French army tank crew member leaked a portion of of the manual, not to get anything changed within the game, but rather simply to win an argument on the internet. Which, you know,
know, I guess, checks out because it's the internet and that's just kind of what happens. Like, I kid you not, I'm bringing it up right here. Look at this. Th th this is what it is that I am talking about. They're having an argument? No, all the clerics have its crossed out right here. Rotation speed says so in both docs that I posted. And yes, it's been reported. It took blank seconds for the turret to make a complete turn. So blank is indeed correct, not blank. I'm mentioning the S2 tank that I was in. The posts that we're talking about here were made that night during an argument between multiple users regarding in-game representation of the Leclerc, its abilities, its specs, its speed, these kinds of details. And what the tanker was claiming in that previous thing that you just saw was that he was a crew member on the Leclerc S2, which is still something that is fielded by the French army today. Now, naturally, of course, when this happened, four moderators quickly went in and removed the content, but some of the information Information that we are talking about here still remains on the website and naturally people ended up taking screenshots and there are images of this stuff out on the internet if you are capable of searching and finding it. it it's there and of course because this is war thunder that we are talking about and if everything that we've talked about here before hasn't already given a heads up on what these people are like the moderators naturally had to go in afterwards and say guys it's not funny to leak classified documents of modern equipment you put the lives of many at stake who work daily with the vehicles Keep Keep in mind that those documents will be deleted immediately alongside sanctions. Thanks for reading. Once again, I do not know what happened to the supposed crew member that we were talking about here. I don't know if their story was legitimate. All I know is that they posted something that they weren't supposed to, and as a result, did get in trouble at least on here, and everything was quickly taken down, or at least as much as they could. The French could not let their British rivals outdo them in this screw-uppery. And now that we've talked about the previous three things in here, my friends, I would have to say that among all kinds of nations that you would expect to have leaks, you would probably expect it to come specifically from Western powers that end up leaking things to the general public, not necessarily leaking it directly to enemies unless they are paid, like in the case of espionage. But you don't expect that same kind of thing to end up happening from a place that is usually so incredibly restrictive when it comes to information. Yeah, that's right, people. We are talking about China and the ZTZ-99 tank. Because guys, come on, let's be real. When we are talking about things with China, it is really no secret that information dissemination is something that is extremely heavily regulated within China. It is not something that you can easily get information out or into. It's just that that is how China works, especially with anything that potentially is connected to either the government or its military. That is that is an absolute truth of the matter. And so naturally speaking, that means that it was going to be a brutal shock for this communist country when its military secrets behind a particular ammunition type that it utilizes for its ZTZ-99 tank would end up going viral on social media. And let me explain. The ZTZ-99, or rather the Type-99, that I'm sure a number of you who are watching are probably more aware of in terms of its terminology, that is something that is a relatively new addition to the armored force of the People's Liberation Army of China. The Type 99 was something that was first unveiled back in 1999 and was a showpiece of the October 1999 National Day Parade. To date today, the total production of these tanks has most certainly reached beyond a thousand units, replacing many of China's aged and outgoing Cold War era designs in circulation. And that difference is a very important thing because the Type 99 represents a major Chinese break from the previous heavy reliance on Soviet Russian tank design influence, bringing the nation on par with many of its global counterparts. The Type 99 was something that was going to be born from work undertaken by Chinese engineers to design, develop, and produce a wholly Chinese tank. So this is a tank that when we were talking about it, this is supposed to be the showcase of the People's Liberation Army. But despite that, the tank is still rather expensive. And as a result of that, the Type 96 is still something that is more heavily used in greater numbers by the PLA. But that doesn't really matter for the Chinese. They needed the Type 99 to be as big, as bad, and as powerful as possible. And it was something that specifically had to be Chinese and Chinese alone. This is a point of pride for the Chinese, which makes it all the more frustrating frustrating for the CCP that a leak would occur regarding their prized baby. The player reportedly shared an image of a military document of the shell, as well as possibly the shell itself placed over the document. The system has not entirely been unclassified by the PLA, and so the image was swiftly removed from War Thunder's forums, but that didn't really matter. By this point, it was out, it had already gone viral, and that is why you can see this very clear image behind me here. It's right here. 
Like, like the thing is right here. By the looks of it in that image, that does not appear to be something that can simply go right up the prison door here in order to be able to escape. Nope, once that is out, that thing is out. So yeah, the guy who ended up posting this image was naturally banned. He was not allowed back onto the forums again. And then Gaijin had to go and give a statement saying, our community managers immediately banned the user and deleted his post. As the information on this particular shell is still classified in China, publishing classified information on any vehicle of any nation at War Thunder Forum is prohibited and the game developers never use it in their work. And so you might wonder, okay, why is the player going to post this in the first place? It's not like you're going to be adding a completely new tank. Are they trying to add in a new type of ammunition that they want that to be represented in the game so that they'll be able to utilize it? No, the Chinese player appeared to have posted this content not out of any malicious intent, but rather in order to get the developers to change the in-game statistics of this ammunition in the game that obviously they didn't really have the information on how it properly functions or what it will do. The weapon in question that we're talking about here is the DTC-10-125, an anti-tank round that is used by the Chinese military in current times, and the job of the weapon system, the shell is to punch through the metal and breach the interior compartments of the tank, knocking it out. This is something that is also known as a kinetic energy penetrator, and its advanced capability is one of the key reasons as to why the Chinese do not want anyone to actually know what the stats are of this weapon. With over 1,200 tanks manufactured over the past two decades, it makes absolute sense that with the Type 99 being as valuable as it is to the Chinese military, they do not want the components to their weapons being put on the internet for other people to potentially see. This is a pretty big deal. But okay, next up on this list, we have the UHT-665 Eurocopter Tiger Helicopter. Now, kind of like the first one, I'm gonna go ahead and say right now that I don't really have much information on this one regarding what ended up happening with the leak, as when it happened, it appears to have been rather swiftly dealt with to the point that I can't, again, find much information online. So if you have anything else regarding it, by all means, please do let me know in the comments because I really wanna see more about this. But either way, yeah, you can see from the image behind me right here that we're talking about a helicopter this time, not a tank. For anyone who is unfamiliar with this vehicle, the Eurocopter Tiger is a four-blade twin-engine attack helicopter which first entered service back in 2003. In France and Spain, the Tiger is known as Tigre because, of course, when we're talking about a Latinized language such as French or Spanish, that is for Tiger, while in Germany, it is simply referred to as the Tiger. Development of the Tiger would start back during the Cold War, and it was initially intended as an anti-tank helicopter platform to be used against a potential Soviet ground invasion of Western Europe. But of course, the Soviet Union never actually invaded. That didn't actually end up happening. And over the course of the prolonged development of making this helicopter in the first place, the Soviet Union would ultimately collapse, meaning the entire purpose of this thing in the first place was kind of null and void. It wasn't really going to be a thing anymore. But hey, you know, they poured all this money and time and energy into the development of this copter, so why not just continue with it anyway? Just why not? And so France and Germany would go and proceed with the development of the Tiger, developing it more as a multi role attack helicopter and it would work achieving operational readiness by the year 2008 and honestly the thing looks pretty cool the tiger has the distinction of being the first all composite helicopter that was developed in europe even the earliest models that we're talking about here also incorporate other advanced features such as a glass cockpit stealth technology high agility to increase its survivability and improved variants have since entered service outfitted with even more powerful engines and compatible with a wider variety of weapons since entering service, Tigers have been used in combat in Afghanistan, in Libya, in Mali, and they are things that are still in use to this very day. And then, from what it is that I can see, War Thunder went in and compromised them a little bit. Again, all the forum posts that we're talking about here appear to have been taken down rather quickly, so there was nothing in here that I was capable of pulling up when looking at this, but it seems that in late 2022, a forum member went and posted parts of the armor layout of the Eurocopter for some reason. I don't know if it's for an argument, I don't know if it's for like trying to get something changed in it, there's nothing in here that I've been capable of finding for it, but apparently, they did it. And the response from War Thunder itself was extremely rapid, and the user was ultimately banned, and the content swiftly removed. It was gone. That's it. And so honestly, maybe they were so quick about it that even though people saw what happened, no one was really able to get more of the information out of there before it was all removed. So let's just move on to the next one, which is bigger. 
The next thing that we're going to be talking about here is incredibly stupid. And when I say incredibly stupid, I mean, yes, of course it is a big deal, but it is even dumber because it is not just one leak. It is two leaks that occurred back to back over the span of literally two days. And the leak that we're going to be talking about in question here is for the F-15 Strike Eagle and the F-16. And because these things occurred within days of each other, it's going to be pretty hard for me to go and distinguish between the both of them as there really is no separate event. It all just kind of blend in together. So I'm going to be talking about them simultaneously, and that's just really all that I can do. Here is six and seven together. For anyone who is not exactly familiar with aircrafts, the Boeing F-15E dual role fighter is an advanced long-range interdiction fighter and tactical aircraft. The F-15E is the latest version of the Eagle, which is a Mach 2.5 class twin-engine fighter. More than 1,500 F-15s are in service worldwide, and it's not just with the United States Air Force. We're talking about with the U.S. National Guard, with the Air Forces of Israel, with Japan, with Saudi Arabia, including over 220 F-15E fighters. And the F-15E is something that is known as the Strike Eagle, something that made its first flight back in 1986. It is armed with air-to-air -air missiles that can be launched from beyond visual range and has air-to-ground capabilities to penetrate hostile air and ground defenses to deliver up to 24,000 pounds of precision ordnance on whatever target you wish and make it go boom. As a result of that, since the year 2001, the United States Air Force has primarily used the F-15E aircraft. Close air support, I mean. It is blowing everything up all over the ground. The other plane that we are talking about here is the F-16, the plane that has effectively been the workhorse of the U.S. Air Force for decades going back. And as for its background, well, the short of it is that two projects from Northrop and General Dynamics back during the Cold War would reach the final of the LWF, the Lightweight Fighter Competition, to create a new light fighter for the U.S. Air Force. In January of 1975, the winner of the competition was the YF-16, developed by General Dynamics, and intense testing would continue after the launch of the F-16A fighter into the series, and was only completed in the year 1978. The new generation fighter that we're talking about here is something that was designed for Mach 2 speeds and was able to perform maneuvers at 9G overloads, which mind you, when we are talking about that, that is even higher than the requirements that were initially declared for in the competition, so this thing was incredibly impressive. The F-16A would end up seeing service with the Israeli Air Force over Lebanon in the early 1980s, and the jet fighters were also used against ground targets during Operation Desert Storm. Over this time, the F-16A fighters would be continuously improved as they were produced, being used and produced and modernized to this very day. In addition to the United States, a number of foreign countries have also become operators of the F-16As, including Belgium, Israel, Pakistan, Italy, Indonesia, and others. These fighters are produced both domestically and also under license in foreign countries. What we are talking about here is a hugely popular plane, and as you can probably imagine, there is a lot of information that potentially you could release on this thing. Hell, there's a lot of information that you'd be able to release on both this and the F-15E. The first leak that we're going to be talking about here involves the F-16A fighter jet and the AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile, or the AMR. AAM, which I have to say right from the beginning as an acronym does not exactly sound like something that really shortens a name much to begin with. It's of course, military and acronyms and things being long. Of course, of course that has to happen. Why not? Why not? Either way, what happened is that the F-16A had just been introduced to the game of War Thunder in late December of 2022, when le literally less than a month later, people decided that they were going to leak information about it. Like I kid you not, this plane was added in late December, and within a month, there was a leaked document about it. It was on January 16th, 2023, when the user Space Navy 90 would go and write in the War Thunder forums. Interesting thing I found during my research. During early AMRAAM testing, you can see how the F-16A would equip the AIM-120 and use TWS on the non-MFD stores control panel, SCP. Oh my god, yes, I know. I know military terminology and acronyms. I understand. It gets really confusing to a lot of people really fast. I, I know. But to explain it, the F-16A was the earliest F-16 production model, and the AMRAAM AAM 
is a radar-guided missile that is designed to give it the ability to engage targets beyond visual range. The SCP, or Stores Control Panel, was a control panel in the F-16A cockpit that gave the pilot control over missiles, bombs, and fuel tanks that were attached to the fighter. This is something that would later be replaced by the Multifunction Display, or MFD, which is an LCD screen that could do the job of the SCP and several other control panels. TWS, or Track While Scan, is a radar trick that allows a fighter to both track targets while scanning for new ones. Now, almost immediately as soon as this happened, Gaijin's moderators naturally stepped in and stopped the entire thing, hiding the contents of this post, of course. Space Navy 90 would argue over the course of this that, hey, no, the information that I'm talking about here is so old, it doesn't violate the rules. This is not something that should be classified here anymore. The mods, however, said no, that sharing the information would violate U.S. regulations on exporting sensitive military information. The International Traffic in Arms Regulation, or ITAR regime, controls the flow of both military hardware and information outside of the U.S. While the information in the post might have been legal to share in the U.S., by posting it on the internet, that means that literally anyone else around the world would have been able to see this information, and that means that you are running afoul of ITAR. So no, not allowed, removed, it's over. But then as soon as this happens, almost immediately after, literally within two days, an entire host of additional restricted documents about the F-15E Strike Eagle, that gets posted. And when I talk about a whole host of documents, I mean an entire host of documents. I mean, just look at this. Look at how much information was dropped over the course of this leak on this one freaking plane. Information on flight controls, air-to-air -air radar modes, air-to-ground programmable armament control systems, its designations, its bombing modes, all this information, literally everything you could possibly want to know about the plane, it's here. What the hell, man? Most of the other leaks that we're talking about here were parts of manuals. It was information about armor. It wasn't like all of the components of a vehicle. But yeah, the documents that we're talking about here were posted on the War Thunder forum on January 18th, 2022 by a user by the name of Ranch Sauce 39 And naturally, of course, this was deleted almost immediately by Gaijin Entertainment and the discussion on the forum completely shut down. But this screenshot, the one that I'm talking about here, this is something that has been preserved and spread all across the internet. It's why I was able to bring it in front of you immediately at this moment and where people have turned the entire thing into a massive meme. Like I said, uh, tur turned into a massive meme. And I mean, to be fair, when people are talking about this, they're not just talking about it as a kind of joke. There is a genuine debate that is going on with this leak, whether or not it was actually as much of a problem as people were presenting, because they argue that a lot of this just does not contain classified information. And in the end, though we do describe this as a leak, the four moderators do seem to agree that while the documents themselves in the situation are declassified, simultaneously publishing them was restricted. This was something that was disallowed by both U.S. law and the rules of the forum. You are not allowed to post these kinds of things. But if this video has taught you anything, it's, uh, yeah, that doesn't really matter to any of the War Thunder users. They're going to continue to post these things regardless to either make an argument, try and get something put into the game, or really just for shits and giggles, it seems. I, I don't really know what else for a lot of these. Like, here's the point that I'm making here, guys. By this point, leaks had become so frequent and so severe, arguably, that there was a post that ended up being put onto Reddit and the news articles written about it that said that major military industries, like in the case of Raytheon, were specifically flagging potential workers for whether or not they played War Thunder and could be a potential leak. Like, check out this article right here, though I'm going to go ahead and specify right now that this entire thing is a bit of a misunderstanding. I don't want you to get the wrong idea about it in the first place. Playing the military simulation War Thunder isn't recommended if you ever want to work for a company involved in national security. As Games Radar reports, a user going by the name Add Fiat 6616 please posted on the War Thunder subreddit earlier this week, explaining how a friend of his had applied for a job at aerospace and defense conglomerate Raytheon Technologies. As part of the security clearance process, a private investigator is used to contact the candidate's witnesses, which is shorthand for their friends. Add Fiat 6616 please was one of those friends and therefore received a call to answer a range of questions in an attempt to discover if the candidate's lifestyle raised any red flags, and one of those questions was, did he play War Thunder? 
Oh my god, guys, the military industrial complex does not want you playing this video game because otherwise, potentially, you are a hazard. Except no, that wasn't the case. It's just considering the amount of leaks that were going on at this time, it's completely understandable as to why people thought that that might be true in the first place, but almost immediately after this was done, it was followed up the very next day. Update, January 25th. Raytheon Technologies has been in touch to state that the company does not want to know if potential candidates play War Thunder. What? You're really gonna break my heart like that, Raytheon. Really? Their video game habits don't factor into the interview process. Each person is only asked about their education, employment, and criminal history. Sorry to be the one who poured cold water on such a fun story, a spokesperson says. Yeah, that Redditor, of course, then went on to admit that he made the story up, but does insist that he does have a friend that works at Raytheon and that private investigators are still used at the company. But as the article puts it, quite frankly, we have no idea who's actually telling the truth at that point. And I'm more likely, I can't believe I'm saying this, to believe the military industrial complex than some guy on Reddit. But again, the entire thing is probably understandable as to why people would think that this is something that could happen considering the amount of leaks that we've already talked about. And hey, guess what? We're not done. The thing that you can see behind me here is the Sukhoi Su-57, a Russian aircraft that, I'll be honest, the United States Intelligence Service, over the course of many years, has probably gone through many great lengths in order to try and get as much information on this plane as possible. But you know, if they really wanted the information, then I guess that all that they would have to do is just go check the War Thunder forums. Because you know, I'm sure they're going to be able to at least get some information about it at significantly less cost than any other kind of method. Now, as the articles talking about this incident have stated, it's unclear how much secret information may have actually been gleaned about the Su-57 from the previous month's leak. Because yes, when I say previous month, this is an article that was written in February, and this is a leak that once again, like the others, occurred in January of 2023, baby. Man, early January of this year was a big problem for a lot of places. Still, the Kremlin has been increasingly tight-lipped when it comes to releasing any details about the fighter, while at the same time, attempting to hype up its capabilities. This is a plane that for years, Russian experts have been suggesting that this is as capable as the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II. It is also something that could receive upgrades that would enhance its abilities to the point that the Su-57 could almost be considered a sixth-generation fighter. And yet, weirdly enough, Russia has employed very few of these over the skies of Ukraine, and by all account, they've only been used in a handful of sorties. Like, this is just not something that we've seen a lot of. Generally speaking, when these things are utilized, they are used to launch weapons at targets from a very safe distance, and then immediately go back into Russian airspace. Or, the entire time, they were in Russian airspace, never leaving. Which, honestly, I can't really say that I blame them when we're talking about a vehicle that is as expensive as a modern jet fighter. Moscow very likely does not want to risk its very expensive new fighter, especially considering the fact that it has failed to maintain maintain any real degree of air superiority over Ukraine over the past several years. I'm not going to get really into it. I'm not going to, but you know, to, to be fair, guys, I mean, come on, think about it there. I have no wish to be demonetized by YouTube when talking about anything with Ukraine, but losing one of these would be a serious and costly embarrassment to Moscow. It absolutely would. The development of the twin-engine single-seat fighter began in the year 2002, and still, according to a 2020 analysis by the UK-based Royal United Services, the aircraft hasn't actually matured over time to become a credible frontline weapon system. It's just not something that, at this point, is actually practical to utilize. According to reports, the Russian Aerospace Forces was on track to receive about 22 of the fighters by the end of this next year, but that number was not set to reach 76 until the year 2028. And if you consider everything that has been going on in Ukraine for the past year or so, this is something that more than likely is going to impact delivery schedule, though we can't exactly say for certain. But of course, this is Russia that we're talking about, and Russia has never exactly been one to shy away from delays and setbacks when it comes to military technology. That is a very real fact of life over there. But either way, at the exact same time that information on the Su-57 was released, information on the MiG-29 was also released. A user by the name of Zevo underscore 12 underscore inch, which man, what a name, went and shared classified information regarding the MiG-29's radar properties, 
claiming the source to be a declassified MiG-29 manual. Both of the posts that were made about both of the planes were subsequently taken down, but because of images that you can see like over here on Reddit, yeah, uh, you can still find this information and get access to it. Like, no, seriously, no problem, but the secrecy regime has not been officially lifted from this book. They may not accept it. The inscription is top secret, just crossed out with a felt tip pen. There are no official seals on the lifting of the secrecy regime. That's why I haven't posted it on the forum for so long. But you did it anyway there, buddy. And seriously, a bear on the Russian flag with an I heart Russia sticker. Really? This is just too perfect. It's just, it's just such a perfect image to be able to talk about this. Anyway, moving on, until a few days ago, as far as I'm aware, the last leak that we had had up until the thing that just recently occurred was what you can see behind me here, the Shenyang J-8B. That's right, baby, we're going back to the Chinese. For anyone who doesn't recognize it, the Shenyang J-8 had begun life back in the early 1960s as a project for a long-range high-altitude interceptor. Conceptually, this is something that would be a scaled-up twin-engine development of the J-7, which was the Chinese version of the rather prolific Soviet design, MiG-21 Fishbed. Although design work began as early as 1964 and a prototype would first fly in 1969, it wasn't until the mid-1980s that the production-optimized J-81 was actually ready to be delivered to the People's Liberation Army Air Force. And by then, the aircraft that we're talking about here was so seriously outdated because, again, it took 20 freaking years to develop, and only around 100 of these things were ever completed. So since that was going to be relatively pointless, List, work on the second generation, the J-82, also known as the J-8B, began in 1980 and was then a major redesign of the original aircraft. The J-82 would feature side-mounted engine intakes instead of the MiG-21-style nose intake on the J-81, and this would allow for a large radar to be fit in the forward fuselage. The J-82 was then first flown in June of 1984, and while it did offer an advantage over the rather basic J-81, it was still unfortunately hampered by the limitations of Chinese aviation technology, which admittedly was not all that great. It was lagging behind a lot of what was found in Western and Soviet fighters. And as a result of that, the People's Liberation Army Air Force was just not really willing to place any kind of orders for the fighter. It just it, it wasn't all that good. Which brings us to a rather rather weird point about this thing's history. It was actually during the J-82's flight testing that Beijing would take a look at the United States and go, hey, hey man, can you help us out with our plane? We want to make it a little bit more modern. And guess what? They did. If anyone is confused about that, considering what is currently going on with the United States and Chinese relations, well, this was a very different time. This is the early 1980s, and this is immediately after China and the United States have opened up to one another after the Nixon administration. And so it is seen as a very positive thing that the two countries can do in order to be able to work together. It seems fine. And so a formal military assistance program that is overseen by the U.S. Air Force and nicknamed Peace Pearl was subsequently initiated. In August of 1987, the United States Air Force Aeronautical Systems Division would then place a contract with Grumman in order to provide avionic upgrades for a number of the J-82 fighters, between 50 to 55 of them, depending upon the source, worth around $500 million. Which, to be honest, considering the scope of the deal that we're talking about here, seems like a pretty good deal until certain events happen, because of course this is China, and China, every time that you bring up anything in history gets a little bit spicy. Once tanks rolled into Tiananmen Square back in June of 1989, any cooperation between Chinese companies and American companies and really any other kind of nations kind of ground to a little bit of a halt. With almost immediately after arms embargoes and sanctions rapidly being placed on China, and naturally this means that all of those deals that were supposed to go through with the United States helping the Chinese Air Force, yeah, that wouldn't really happen. The U.S. arms embargo was enacted into law, effectively prohibiting the sale of all military items, whether lethal or non-lethal, on the U.S. munitions list to China. Official confirmation of the cancellation of the Peace Pearl program would come in May of 1990, and ultimately, only around 60 ex examples of what we know of as the J-82 were completed. This all being done between the years of 1992 and 1995, all of which had to be done without U.S. equipment. They pretty much had to source the equipment from wherever they could get it across the world because they, they, just, they didn't have the good stuff themselves. And again, in the end, 
Only about 60 of these things ever really got created there, which I guess is a funny little detail, but what about the leak? Well, back on January 30th of 2023, and yes, my friends, I know if you're looking at me right now, this also happened in January of 2023, just like the previous four. The leaker in question was contesting the accuracy of the in-game's model radar display, and he went and leaked a military document regarding the technical specifications of the device. The leaker also went and shared information on the aircraft's ground attack capability abilities and specifically pointed out the lack of a ballistic computer on the in-game model and I have the archive here which I will probably end up posting down in the links down in the descriptions below because then you're going to be able to uh to see what it is that I'm talking about here but as you can see from the fact that this whole thing has been archived yeah this th this was naturally removed off of the War Thunder forums this was not something that could sit there but you Mo Blah, 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 Hamen, who is located at a certain Ikea somewhere in southern China. You done goofed here, buddy. I'm not sure if any of the people who are watching this right now are capable of reading Chinese, but I do not know what any of this is saying right here. But yeah, I'm going to go off the information that I was able to find saying what it is that he posted and what it is that he requested, because yeah, I, I, I can't make heads or tails of this. But it happened. And all of that brings us to the latest leak that occurred on August 31st, 2023, only this last week, regarding the Eurofighter Typhoon DA-7 fighter jet. Now guys, before I continue with this, I should go ahead and clarify something about this plane itself. This is not a usable plane in War Thunder in comparison to any of the things that we have previously talked about in here. And ironically enough, for a particular user, that appears to have been a problem. The Eurofighter Typhoon DA-7 is a very advanced aircraft, at least something for being a prototype. In 19 1983, development of the Eurofighter began as part of the new European Fighter Program, which was a program involving Italy, Germany, the United Kingdom, Spain, and France. The first prototypes that were developed were DA, development aircraft, and the first of the seven, you have the German DA-1, flew for the first time on March 27th, 1994, followed by the British DA-2 on April 6th of that same year, and a total of seven prototypes were built, with DA-1 and and DA-5 being German, DA-2 and DA-4 being British, and the DA-3 and DA-7 being Italian, and the DA-6 being Spanish. So when you hear about this fighter, the one that we are talking about is not an accepted military vehicle. No, this is a developmental test prototype, and the one in question, the DA-7, is specifically the one that is made by the Italians. And it appears, from what you can see here of this archived thread, is that an Italian really wanted it added into the game. Oh, and would you look at that? It seems a majority of the people agreed with him in the first place. Within this thread, you would find him saying, and I quote, this is a 730 page manual for the DA-7 that contains everything on all the systems, weaponry, flight data, etc. I hope this data will help the devs to add this magnificent jet faster and make it as accurate as possible. I can't wait to fly it in the game. So this guy just got his hands on developmental technology, the manuals and instructions, the details behind something that has not even been accepted into a freaking military yet. And he is posting it online because he really wants it in a game to be able to fly. Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, naturally, as you can expect, what ended up happening is that War Thunder's moderation team reacted very quickly, going in and deleting the post and reminding users once again, hey, guys, please do not post restricted military documents. Or, for the love of God, links to sites where such intel could be purchased as that is something that happened in the very thread that was posted after the original person that posted that poll had his stuff deleted. I just, I, 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 I can't believe this is happening again. Or no, I say that. I say I can't believe it. And then you look at all the details of everything that we've covered so far. And really, history is just the story of humanity screwing up again and again and again and seemingly repeating these same mistakes over and over again. Have I ever told you the definition of insanity? Because this isn't Far Cry, it's freaking War Thunder. But either way, in the end, all of it was taken down. The manual uploaded by the War Thunder player has a restricted status, so it's not supposed to be distributed online in any way whatsoever, something that the user apparently didn't know about since they themselves found it online, as though that makes it okay. That, of course, doesn't make it okay just to share it with others. At least the motivation behind the post wasn't to win an argument this time around. I also love how in this particular article that since the DA-7 is not in the game, they say this is not a Eurofighter Typhoon, but a Swedish plane which no manuals have been leaked so far. Yeah, yeah, of course. 
Anyway, my friends, this has been Stakuyi with the History of Everything podcast YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. This thing took a lot of time to research, to write, to prepare. There was simply so much information to go into this, and I appreciate all of you who stuck with me to the end watching this episode. Even now, I'm starting to get a little sick, and my voice is disappearing. So for all of your support, thank you very much. It would mean the world if you liked, commented, and subscribed, and really showed some love for this channel. And also, let me know in the comment section below of what is that we should cover next. I'm going to be doing more stuff that is not just news and current events. I really want to get back to being able to make more stuff that is general, long-form researched history content, and I'm going to start posting polls in my community page to determine what it is that we need to make next. I can't wait to see you all there. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a good rest of your day and you learn something while getting a little bit of amusement. Goodbye, my friends, and I'll see you next time.